Okay. How's everybody doing this morning? How you doing, Randy? You guys doing good? Yeah? Are you happy to be here? Okay. Randy's here. Hey, thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Pastor Andy. I'm the counseling pastor here, and I'm filling in on announcements this morning. We're just so thankful that you're here. Um, we want to work through some announcements. Before we do, um, if you're visiting with us, this is your first time with us, thanks for being here, and we want to um, we want to meet with you. We want to talk with you. We want to um, just uh, welcome you warmly. Um, so after the service, I'm going to kind of be out by the Welcome Center, and I'd love to, uh, to chat with you and um, answer any questions you might have. And also, we have coffee cups for those folks that are first-time visitors with us, so um, please feel free to stop by um, the table out in the foyer. And also, we have QR codes. We kind of live by QR codes around here. So um, there's all kinds of QR codes that you can scan that tell uh, about our church, talk about the ministries we have, and uh, if you have any trouble with that, we'd love to answer any questions you have. Uh, kind of first up on the announcements for this morning is Trunk or Treat. That's going to happen uh, Sunday, October 31st. And you can sign up to uh, be involved in Trunk or Treat uh, with either having a car or you could sponsor Trunk or Treat with, with treats, actually. And uh, you can go to um, our registrations. You can go to our church website and find out how to sign up for that. We'd love to have you sign up for that. And we actually have some spaces open. So if you're inclined that way, um, please feel free to use the app and uh, sign up also. On uh, the 31st, we're going to have the Jeff Arendale Band. Brandon, do you want to give a little tee up for the band? Yeah, sure. So on that Sunday, we're going to be blessed by the Jeff Arendale Band. They've been a blessing to us through the years. They've helped us out with our praise banquet, and uh, even when we're at the theater, they came in and led worship. So it's going to be a great morning of worship where we can actually sit down and just worship along with you guys. So it'll be a blessing to have them with us. Very good. And lastly, we have... Uh, uh, the men's conference is October 15th through the 16th. The cost is $30. It's located at Sailorville. You can register guys on the Church Center app and be involved with that. I had an axe back there. I had a double-headed axe that I was going to bring up here. And then we tried it in the first service, and it was a little bit strange. People figured uh, they had an axe to grind. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Anyway, yeah, it was bad. Sorry about that. It was bad. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, I think this evening is the last opportunity to sign up. You have to sign up by this evening. And uh, we'd love to have as many guys go as possibly can go. So please visit the app. Sign up for that. It's a great time. We do have axe throwing. We have all kinds of uh, things going on at the men's event. And... Uh, so registration closes tonight at midnight. The cost is cheap. It's 30 bucks uh, for Friday and Saturday, and uh, you're going to love it. I don't know that I have anything else other than giving. Um, we, don't, we don't have a plate that we pass around here. We have offering boxes. So feel free to utilize the offering boxes or go to the church website, and you can figure out how to give online through the church website. And I think that's all I have. Let's just take a couple of minutes, fist bump, handshakes, hugs if you want to give them. But say hi to your neighbors, okay? Take a couple minutes.
Good morning, Living Waters. So glad to see you here this morning. Let's go find our seats, please, and we'll stand at our seats because we're going to start in our, our time of worship together with song. As we sing this morning, let's sing about and pray about him showing his, his glory to us this morning.
Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see all of you guys. Love you too, Randy. Good to see you too, man. All right. Uh, if you have a copy of God's Word, go ahead and open it up to Matthew 24. And my name is Pastor Josh. I'm the preaching pastor. And if you're here with us for the very first time, I just want to say welcome. And uh, it's good to have you here with us. So if we get the middle lights on, that'd be great. There we go. So we are going to be in Matthew 24, and just welcoming you to church, it is a privilege and an honor for you to be here with us today, okay? Some of you had to get kids ready for church this morning, and we give you a ton of kudos, okay? This moment is not lost on us. How much work you've done, how much prep you've done, how much fighting you've already done, can I get a witness? And amen. So we praise God that you're here. Uh, for those of you who are here and, and this is your first time, this is a wonderful thing for you to be here to hear God's word. This is, this is the best place. And it takes a little warming up, you know, when you come to church, it takes a little warming up sometimes. Like, okay, is my heart in it? Am I connecting? It, it, you know, all these other distractions from my week. Is this really the moment God has for me? Yes, it is. This is the moment for a Christian. This is the pinnacle of our week. Amen? This is it. So, so we got to warm it up a little bit. We're going to read the scriptures together. And then I just want to pray over the word that God would speak through his word to your heart, whether you're a Christian or non-Christian, that God would speak to your heart and that the Lord would do something great inside of each one of us this morning. So let's Let's read God's word, Matthew 24, 36 through 51. And as we read, we will ask God to do great things and then we'll pray and dig in. So starting in verse 36 of Matthew 24. Now concerning the day and the hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven nor the son, but the father only. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the son of man. For in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the son of man. Then two will be left in the field and one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know on what day the Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his, his master has set over his household? to give them food at the proper time. Blessed is the servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all of his possessions. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is delayed and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with drunkards, the master of the servant will come on that day when he does not expect at an hour he does not know, and he will cut him into pieces and put him with the hypocrites in that place. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Praise God for the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray together and dig in. Father, thank you. What a privilege and an honor it is to warm up our hearts to your word. 
to sing songs to you, to praise Jesus, to push each other toward Jesus and love and good works. God, this moment is not lost on us. This is a moment that is a gift from your hand. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed the rest of this day. So God, we're here to meet with you. We want you to speak to our hearts. We want you to transform our lives. We want the gospel to rest inside of us and change us. Lord, be with every Christian that knows you, Jesus. May they find your nearness a great blessing. And Lord, be with anybody here who does not yet know Jesus. May they find salvation, forgiveness for the first time. And Lord, we pray that you would bless the word as it comes to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're continuing our sermon series, The Return of Christ and the Life to Come. We are finishing up the Olivet Discourse. Now that is the sermon that Jesus gave in Matthew chapter 24 to his disciples just outside the city of Jerusalem. He was giving this as a, a preview of sorts for his second coming and the end of the age. Now, if my voice gives out this morning, if that happens, you can blame the Iowa Hawkeyes. I think we have a picture we can put up here. This is a scene from the game last night. If you're not a sports person, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Bear with me. So there was this football game last night in Iowa City, in Kinnick Stadium, and there I was, section 127, row 75, or yeah, row 75, seat 19. That's where I sat. And we watched with great enthusiasm the loudest game I have ever been to in the history of my life. And I've been going to Iowa Hawkeye games at Kinnick Stadium for about 20 years or so off and on. This was by far the loudest game I've ever been to. I think the decibel level got up to 118, all right, similar to the third song when Brandon plays worship here, right? Very similar. And so th there, there was just such um, kind of emotional roller coasters during this game. During the first quarter, Iowa was down by lots of points, and it didn't start very good. And Bob Stoops, one of the great Iowa Hawkeyes, was down on the field, and during one of the commercial breaks, you know, they're interviewing him, and he's a football Hall of Fame guy, and yada, yada, yada. And he said, they said, what's going to happen, coach? Are the Hawks going to win? He's like, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. This stadium's going to get rocking, and the Hawks are going to win. And, and the response from the crowd was putrid. I mean, it was like, eh, eh. like very small cheering. Because at that point, it didn't look good for Iowa. It was 17 to 3, and we were down. And Bob Stoops sounded like a prophet who had lost his marbles, right? Like he, did, he didn't have the prediction correct. But at the end of the game, you, all of a sudden the Hawks come back and, and we're scoring. And this play right here, this was the game-winning touchdown. This is Nico Regani, the receiver, running to the end zone with about six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. He scores this touchdown. The Hawkeyes take the lead. And here's the thing. Throughout the game, you just didn't know until you knew. Right? You didn't know what was going to happen until something unfolded. A play happened right in front of you and the, the crowd went crazy and all this stuff. And may I submit to you, as a bridge to our text this morning, you just don't know with Jesus. It, it, looks, it looks bleak at times. Sometimes you're wondering what in the world is going on with Christianity and with the world and the crazy stuff around, and you just don't know. It's like the game you think you're going to lose, and then all of a sudden, Jesus shows up. And may I submit to you, that's how the end times are. Amen? We just don't know until we know, until Jesus in the moment does his thing and saves the world. Now, we've been looking for the last three weeks at 12 signs of the end times. Okay, so we're going to put those up on the screen. We have 12 signs of the end times, things that we've talked about over the last three weeks that Jesus has said, when you're thinking about my return and the end of the age, here is the list of things that you're going to need to be aware of. You're going to take note of. 
And last week we looked at the tottering earth and the powerful revelation and the eternal word. And so this morning we're going to look at the final three signs of Jesus' second coming and the end of the age in Matthew 24. And, and as has been the big idea for three weeks, so the big idea again this week is the same as it's always been. Jesus wants us to be aware of the signs of the times and stay close to him, stay on path. Okay, so how many of you have had been attacked even this week probably by getting off path? You know, you walk with Jesus, you got the security blanket called Christ, you're just, you're really near God, which is great. Psalm 73 verse 28 says, it is your nearness, God, that is my good, right? So when you're walking with Jesus, you're close, you're staying on path, but even this week, Satan has done something. He's stirred up your life in such a way that you're like, dude, I really got to pay attention to this and this and this and this, and pretty soon you're like, I'm off path. How did I get off path? It takes a minute, a nanosecond. I'm off path. God, get me back on path. That is Satan's number one goal in life. We are not unaware of his schemes. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, Paul says, we are not unaware of the schemes of Satan. He wants to get us off path. We have to stay on path, which means we need to know the signs of the times because that'll help us stay on path with Jesus. So sign number one this morning in this text is the unpredictable return. The unpredictable return in verses 36, 42 through 44, starting in verse 36, but concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the son, but the father only. Therefore, stay awake. And then he goes on to talk about a master of the house. If he would have known the thief was coming, he would have been awake to stop the thief. And then he says in verse 44, therefore, you must be ready for the son of man is coming at a time you do not expect. So first of all, in this section, Jesus clearly says no one, not even the angels, nor himself, knows when the second coming is going to be exactly only God the Father. Now, when you read your Bible, you should have say what moments, right? When you're reading this verse, you should say say what? Like Jesus is making a statement that you're saying, How is that possible? How can the Son of God say that the Son of God doesn't know when the Son of God is coming back? Does that confuse anybody else? So we read through the word and we go, what, what, what's that about? Here's what that's about. How can Jesus not know something? Well, when Jesus came from heaven to earth, he gave up his full rights of deity and, and for a moment, for a season of time, he completely identified himself with humanity while still remaining 100% God. It is an amazing thing that God is Jesus 100% and he's also man 100%. That is an amazing thing. And that is the reality of Christian doctrine that Jesus somehow gives up the full use or the full rights of his deity while on earth and he identifies completely with his creation. You can read about this in Philippians 2. It's called the kenosis, okay? Read about it. Here's the reality. Jesus, for a moment, laid it down, and at that moment, in Matthew 24, he did not know when he was coming back. Here is my opinion of things, theologically. Do I believe Jesus right now in heaven at the right hand of the throne of God, raised from the dead, ascended into heaven, knows exactly when he's coming back? Yes, I do. I believe that. But I believe at this moment in Matthew 24, he was being genuine. He didn't know. But now he knows exactly when he's coming back. The point is not to confuse you about Christology. The point is for you as a human and me as a human to understand we are not going to know exactly when Jesus is going to return. Can I get a witness? There's a lot of realities that we can know in Scripture. There's a lot of spiritual truth we can know in Scripture. The one reality about Jesus' return is none of us are going to know exactly when. You know, like October 11th, 937 in the morning, that's when Jesus is coming back. If you say that, you are a heretic. Can I get an amen? amen. There's been a lot of false teachers that have raised up since 
the history of the church that have declared the end of the world. For those of you who are alive in 2012, do you remember the Mayan calendar thing? Such a big deal. Such a big deal. Completely false, right? And there's been, a, there's been a lot of different people who have tried to predict the end of the world. The reality is no one knows. So Christian, can we please be humble about the return of Christ? Can we just say we don't know and, and let God be God? It is an unpredictable return. Jesus uses an illustration of a master and a thief. If the master knew when the thief was coming, you're coming at 3 a.m., okay, I'll be ready. If the, if the master knows that, he's going to be ready to protect his house. Okay, a modern illustration of this is clearly the holiday hit Home Alone. Can I get an amen? amen. Clearly, if you remember this movie and you'll be watching this movie in about a month and a half, can I get a Christmas amen? Amen. 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 All right. The thing about Kevin is that he initially does not know when the wet bandits are going to strike. Remember this? So initially, he's unprepared, but then he hears about, you know, when they're going to come, and they're going to come at night. So then Kevin's like doing this whole thing, like he got his BB gun ready, his pellet gun. He's got the whole house ready. He's got Michael Jordan going around on a train. Remember that moment? <laughs> Watching that movie growing up, I was infatuated with Kevin McAllister because I was just like, oh, baby, that's going to be me. When, when, when someone, you know, comes over to my house and my parents are gone and my family's gone, I'm going to be ready, man. I, you know, I start like laying down tar in front of the basement door. No, Josh, don't do that. I'm just trying to do what they do in the movie, you know. Here's the reality. That is an analogy that Jesus would use. If you know the thief is coming, you're going to be ready. But the point is, no one knows when the thief in the night is coming, when Jesus is going to return. Therefore, no one can know. Generally, can we know? Yes, we can know that the tribulation is going to end after seven years. Generally speaking, we can know there are certain moments and things that have to happen, the abomination of desolation and other things, but we don't know the exact day and the exact hour. So Christian, be aware of the unpredictability of Christ's return. Second sign is the unsuspecting society. The unsuspecting society, verses 37 through 41. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. Then they were unaware and the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. So Jesus says that the days leading up to his second coming... Mankind will be filling their schedules with normal worldly pursuits, all right, such as eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. That's normal stuff. They're going to be doing normal things and they will be unsuspecting of Christ's return. Now, this is crazy because there's going to be so much natural calamities going on. If you're reading Revelation correctly, if you're reading Matthew 24 and the judgments of the, on the earth, there's going to be all this stuff happening and this generation right before Christ's return will be like unaware. They're going to be completely caught off guard. Now, I, I get to quote my dad, which is great. I go from ripping him or throwing him under, under the bus like a month ago, which I apologize for, <laughs> to now I get to quote him because he's really smart with end time stuff. Here's what my dad said. He said, the special point of analogy is not that, that the generation was swept away by the flood was exceptionally wicked. I think that's a really important line. It's not like they're doing crazy bad stuff. They're just doing normal things. All right? It says, none of the occupations mentioned were sinful. It was that the world was so absorbed in its own worldly pursuits that it paid no attention to solemn warnings. This is a big deal. Here's why it is a big deal. Because the world is going to be moving on with normal idolatry at the time of Christ's second coming. Did you know what an idol is? An idol is a good thing that becomes an everything thing to you. An idol is anything that's created that is a good thing in and of itself, but you make it a God thing. And whenever you make a good thing a God thing in your life, you are in big trouble. Can I get a witness? Can anybody testify even this week? A good thing becomes a God thing. You're in trouble. 
in that moment because you're ensnared with your own idolatry. And the whole world is going to be ensnared in normal patterns of idolatry before Christ comes. Eating and drinking, well, that implies wealth and ease and comfort and pleasure. What about marrying and giving in marriage? Y'all, have you ever seen a marriage before? Have you ever seen a wedding? Okay. People that are in the wedding parties are obsessed with what? The wedding going really well. Okay. I think there's a lot of moving parts at a wedding. A lot of money being expended. Can I get an amen? As a dad of five girls, can I get an amen? Come on. There's a lot of money that goes out the door. And thankful, I'm thankful for Dave Ramsey because we're, you know, pinching our pennies now so we can actually pay for this stuff, right? But there's also a lot of other things going on. Is my daughter or son marrying the right person? You know, is, 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 are they good enough for my sibling or for my daughter or son? Are they good enough? Is this all going to work out? What about my in-laws? Do I like them? Do I hate them? What is the, what's, where's that at? How, how am I going to do? Like there, there's marriage and giving him marriage. Like the last thing you're thinking about at a wedding is the second coming of Christ. You're thinking about, am I keeping up with the Joneses? Am I keeping up with everybody? Am I keeping up with finances? Am I keeping up with all the stuff? That's the point. Jesus is saying is that we're going to be so driven by all the normal frivolity and idolatry of our culture that it's that very idolatry that is going to make the whole society unsuspecting of Jesus' return. Here's what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5.3. While people are saying peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains. And I got a meme for you, all right? This was the 2016 meme of the year by the New York Times. You guys seen this one before? Come on, you guys have memed this one before. Yes, you have. So the the point of the meme is that the, the building's on fire. Hey, dog, the building is on fire. And you're drinking a cup of coffee while the building's on fire. The second illustration makes a lot of sense. The second picture is... This is fine. Because that's how we deal with a lot of our problems, isn't it? Like, like the building of your life is on fire and the world's on fire and we're just like, this is fine. It's fine. It's going to be okay. We can just get through this. We'll sweep it under the rug. It'll be fine. And this will be the definition of the generation before Christ's second coming where all the world is on fire and they will continually be pursuing eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, idolatry. And be like, this is fine. It's okay. Trust me, we're going to make it. You know, there's a little hint of this in our culture. Amen? Maybe more than a little hint. We've got heart issues that we need to deal with as a church, as a culture, as a society. And we're trying to sweep some of these things under the rug. And I think Jesus is calling us to something greater and higher, which is eternal life, forgiveness of sins, joy in the Holy Spirit, love for brothers and sisters in Christ, bringing society together through what? Through the church, amen? Amen. Through the church. We are the answer that Jesus has commissioned for our culture today. But there is a sense in which the easy American dream Christian life is, let's just sweep it under the rug. This is fine. The house is burning. My life is burning. It's fine. I'll just drink a cup of coffee. It'll be okay. The unsuspecting society is going to be there when Jesus comes back. Third sign, real faith versus false faith. Verses 45 through 51. This is the faithful and wise servant whom his master has set before the household to give them food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant. Happy is that servant whom his master finds so doing when he comes. But verse 48, but if the wicked servant says to himself, my master is delayed, he begins to beat his fellow servants and eats and drinks with drunkards, the master of the servant will come on that day to the wicked servant and and he will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites. Wow. Jesus says that before his second coming, there will be real faith and false faith that will be revealed. So everybody's professing Jesus in this section of verses. Everybody's saying, I'm a believer. I'm religious. I go to church. But, but what Jesus is saying is there will be real faith that will be revealed and there will be false faith that will be revealed at that time. There is a blessed servant and there is a wicked servant. Both profess faith in Jesus. 
The blessed servant, he believes in the imminent return of the master. He is moved by that belief towards busyness, humility and busyness for the kingdom because the master could come back at any time. So genuine faith or the blessed servant is the person who says, I really, truly believe that Jesus is coming back and I am humbly busy for the sake of my king. Okay? Okay. The wicked servant, on the, on the other hand, he is blowing it off, saying, ah, he's been delayed. Flight has been delayed. I got time. I can do things right now with my time because apparently the master has other things going, and I'm banking on the fact that I'll clean up my life right in time for the master's return. You see the two different attitudes? One attitude is of faith and humility. The other is of arrogance and assumption. This is really important. Ephesians 5, 15 and 16. It says this, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time. For the days are evil. Christian, if you want to walk in the Spirit and believe in the second coming of Christ, you need to begin to rewire how you think about your life. And you need to say, instead of wasting time, I'm going to use that time to the best of my ability and stay busy as I see the second coming of Jesus coming. This is so big. Because in contrast, the wicked servant says the opposite. He says, well... Guy's been delayed. I don't know when he's coming back. I'm not sure I believe he is coming back. So therefore, it's a free-for-all. I get to use my life however I want. And Jesus says that the, the life of false faith mistreats other people and does lots of alcohol and, and cares about the trivialities of this life. The, the wicked servant says, I got time, man. It's party time right now. I'm like an Iowa City, University of Iowa student after the Hawkeyes beat Penn State. I got time, man. I got time. We're going to have a good time tonight, right? That's false. False faith. Because you don't know if you have time or not. That is the arrogance of the wicked servant. Now, here's the application. The application for us is Jesus is talking about two individuals who both profess Christ. What is the problem in the world today? Is it the pagans out there, all the pagans who don't know God? Is that the problem? No. Pagans are not the problem. Man, I love pagans. They're some of my favorite people on the earth. Because when you talk to them, they don't care. They don't care about God. They don't care about Jesus. They're just trying to live their best life. They're trying to figure it out, right? The problem is all the religious people, all the church people. Oh, boy, now I'm stepping on toes. Amen? Amen. The problem is people who profess Christ because you have faith people that are genuine and then you have this false faith. And you know what? I'm not here to be your judge. I'm just here to be your preacher. Jesus is going to iron all that out, isn't he? Uh, You can profess Christ all day long, but if you don't possess him, your life will look like arrogant assumption where you think you got time, you got things, you got tons of time to do what you want. Meanwhile, if you're genuinely saved and you really believe in Christ, I'm telling you, a busy life, a humble life is what you're called to, and it's the greatest thing in the world. And we live in an age of distraction, so we have a lot of opportunities to say no to Jesus and say yes to distraction and wasting of time. But I'm telling you, we don't have that long, right? Life is quick. At the game yesterday, they were honoring all these people during commercials. All these groups, military groups and, and alumni and all this stuff. There was one celebration that really caught my ear, though, as a preacher. Because I'm just thinking end time stuff all the time, you know, right now. So I'm sitting there watching all this. And how am I going to bring a football game into the end times? I'll figure it out. <laughs> they honored the 1921 team. They did a whole bunch of video things and some audio things dedicating praise to a team from 100 years ago. I'm not great at math, 
But I did the math. I'm like, man, if all those guys were alive, right? Say they're 20, 22 years old, whatever. 100 years? They would be 122 years old right now if, if they were alive. Everybody else was on the field during the dedications, you know, waving to the crowd, hyping up the crowd, except that one. What noticed, what, what caught my eye and what I noticed was that there was no person on the field, just a trophy. And I'm like, and that's it. And the, the, pl- the applause was paltry because those heroes of the past are gone. And they can't be in that stadium and they can't say anything because life goes quick. You think you have all this time. You don't have all this time. We have 70 years, 80 years if we're given strength, according to Psalm 90. That's it. That's all we got. Amen. How are you going to use your years? If you have true faith, you're going to get busy for Jesus. You're going to be humble. You're going to see his return as a real thing that could really happen, and you're going to lay your life down. If you're a false believer, you're going to be arrogant and lazy. You're going to say, I got time. And as we close this sermon, I want to just give you an illustration, and we'll pray. Satan was talking to his demons, and he was saying, how do we ruin the souls of men and women. What can we do, guys, to ruin the faith of men and women? Well, one demon stepped up and he said, hey, tell them there is no heaven. Tell them there's no heaven. And Satan said, no, no, heaven is written into the hearts of the souls of men and women. I mean, they'll know that they were born for eternity. Like if you tell them there's no heaven, they won't buy that. Another demon came up and said, hey, Satan, Tell them there is no hell. Tell them there's no hell. And Satan said, no, listen, every human has a conscience. They're going to feel guilty about stuff. They're going to know that there's punishment down the line. Humans won't buy into that no hell doctrine. Then a third demon came up to Satan and he said, hey, I got it. Tell them there's no hurry. And Satan said, you're my man. Some of you are believing the lies that you have time. Jesus is saying before he comes back, there will be many who will tell themselves that lie that they have time. False faith believes that there's no hurry. But real faith is the opposite. Where are you at this morning with Jesus Christ? That's my question as we close. We've seen the unpredictable return of Jesus, so we know that no one can predict it. We've seen the unsuspecting society, which all we have to do is look around and see the seeds of that unsuspecting people group. And we've seen real and false faith. So my question to you this morning is, where are you at this morning with Jesus? As we close, you're going to have lots of opportunities to respond If you're here and you know you need to be saved, you can send me an email, okay? We're just providing different avenues on the screen. You can respond. If you need to be saved or born again, know that you're forgiven of your sins, you can just just email me. I'd love to follow up with you. If you're hurting, you say, I need help this morning. You can email Pastor Andy and just say, Andy, here's what's going down. If you need a prayer request, like, I just need prayer. Here's what's going on. My life's crazy. Here's, Here's what I need this morning. You can just send that. So you can do that with your phones. You can respond on your phones. But if you're not into that, I would just say pray silently or pray with somebody around you. Apply the word. How does the word of God apply to my life this week? That is just as much worship as you singing with your hands raised. Applying the scripture, putting it into practice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Here's my plan of how I'm going to, that is just as much worship as me preaching up here. Amen? Amen? This is our time. I'm going to close in prayer. The band will come up. They'll play. And uh, you just get the next few minutes just to talk to God. So however he's moving in your life, talk to him now. And let's do that. And we'll close after that. Father, thank you for your grace. Lord, your word is so good. So good. Jesus, your second coming is so real. Lord, and it's coming sooner than we think. So Lord, we see all the signs that you've given us. Now help us respond. 
So Lord, I pray for every person here, that every single person here would respond to your word through the power of the Holy Spirit in specific ways that would apply to each person. God, do your work. We trust you. Lord, help us to give our hearts to you now. In Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and stand once more. All of creation, all of the earth, make straight a highway path for the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. Shout of your faith, Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride.
Amen. The Holy Spirit of God is stirring in the hearts of his people. Amen. Amen. I just, I just want to give some glory to God as we close. We've had two students come to Christ just this week, which is an amazing thing. Put their faith in Jesus. Yep. Praise God. And I got to brag on my man, Rob Pearson, who's not here. He's actually preaching. We're doing pulpit fill at Indian Old Heights Christian Church. They asked us to provide four preachers this month, which we're doing. Isn't that cool? That's so cool, by the way. And so he's out preaching. And just yesterday, just yesterday, he met a young man in the neighborhood whose name is Xavier, 14-year-old young man. And it was just an amazing story. I'll, I'll let Rob tell it because he's better at it. But <laughs> But he ended up just talking to this guy. This kid was just sitting in the front yard, staring out into the sky. Rob came and talked to him and said, hey, you know, where you at? Here's who I am. And this guy is just like open, ready to talk about Jesus. And Rob led him to Christ right there on the street. Isn't that cool? That is amazing. So led him to Christ on the street, following up with him as a young man. But he was just ready. And I said, Rob, dude, how'd you do that, man? You're cranking it up. I got to step up my game here a little bit. And he was like, Josh, it was nothing of me. It was all of God. Isn't that the coolest testimony ever? So I just, the spirit of God is stirring. He's at work. Is he at work in you? That's the question. So if you have questions about Jesus, how to believe in him, how to trust in him as your Lord and Savior, we would love to talk to you find myself or one of the other pastors, and we would love to chat with you. If you are a Christian, oh, may God work in your life this week. Hey, Randy, let me talk. All right, let me finish. I love you, dude, but shh, shh. Okay. So if you're a Christian, may God stir in you this week. Jesus is coming soon. Don't waste this week. And by, while you're at it, don't waste this day either. Love you. You're dismissed.